Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, and you will get access to weekly Q&As and the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast, where we'll answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. I was muted, of course. Let's begin. Uh, John Watts is already here. Anyone else excited for some glorious Excel spreadsheet goodness? Not today, my friend. Not today. Maybe. But I don't think we will. Google Sheets. No, I'm using, uh, what's this called? Numbers. Because I am a hipster. I have iOS. I don't have Office. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not really sorry. So, diet plan. You know what? Let, let's just dive right into it because you know my streams like 50 minutes of topic and done. <laughs> What's a good meal plan for a T Rex? Um, a lot of raw meat, uh, hopefully alive. Like you want it as rare that it's still breathing. <laughs> no, meal plan. Um, in all honesty, I don't do meal plans. I don't. I don't do meal plans. And here's why. Um, what I consider to be a meal plan is your first meal will be this. Your second meal will be that. Your third meal will be this. Your fourth meal will be that. As in, this is the time you eat this. And this is the time you eat that. And at that time you eat. And I'm kind of like, you want me to hold your hand. You want me to chew the food for you. What? Um, I I refuse. And th th this could be me. This could be on me. I just refuse to do it. But it's like, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to write down every step of every bite you take. Every step you take. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. What I do when it comes to diet advice, is I explain to you why certain things work and why certain things don't. Now, and a couple of um, hacks when it comes to diet. Captain Kapow, been eating pork ramen for the last four days. So good. <laughs> Proper diet. No. Um, what you want, what you want to be taken care of is... How many calories do I need to take in? Now, there's a multitude of calculations on that, but this is what I always do, and this is what I recommend anybody doing. Download my fitness pal. It's free. It's easy. Done. Then, depending on your goal, if you want to lose weight, my fitness pal will ask for your activity level. Now, what I do there is I always set it one lower than what I think it is because these apps calculate it always a bit differently and things like that. And since you want to lose weight, it's better to aim a little bit lower than higher because, and I will get into that later on why I do that, uh, another reason why I do that. Then. Uh, it asks for your height and your weight and your goals, blah, 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 blah. Then it gives you an estimate of daily caloric intake based on that activity level. And since you aimed a little bit lower and you said you wanted to decrease body weight, or at least body fat, depending on, let's say, just for the sake of convenience, body weight. I know, because you can gain weight and lose fat and blah, blah, blah. But for the sake of argument, lose weight. Then you can go to your profile page, and then you can adjust the macronutrients being protein, carbs, and fats. Protein is the one you need to look out for, because if you're a training individual, you want to get at least at least 1.6 times your body weight in kilos in grams of protein. Minimum 1.6. I aim for 1.8. 
Drew told me just aim for 2.0, which is indeed one pound per um one gram per pound of body weight. That way you at least know you're always right. That way you have sufficient. Then when protein is in order and you have your overall caloric intake, then you can say, hey, I'm more of a high carb guy. I'm more of a high fat guy. But Jack, which one is better? Doesn't matter. If you're a recreational lifter, does not matter. Uh, but no, if you're a recreational lifter who just wants to lose weight and look good naked, the optimization of diet really doesn't matter all that much. Most of all the health problems come from being overweight, things like that, plus the fact things you are allergic to or whatever should not be consumed whether it is a good diet or not. If you are allergic to it, don't bloody eat it. If you really dislike the taste of it, don't bloody eat it. Why is that? What's the best diet you can follow? Sorry, what's the best... <laughs> Good job. What's the best diet? The one that you can follow. Now, if you're going to stick that diet full of crap that you don't like to eat, guess what? You're probably not going to be able to follow the bloody diet. Now, will you? No. Get your overall calories. Get your protein. After that, what's your preference? Really, I can say that keto is the best or... Uh, carnivore is the best, or ve <laughs> vegan is the best. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> I could say it, but I would be lying. I really despise vegans. But it doesn't matter. At that point, what I tell my clients is this. You want to go for satiating foods. But not only satiating, you want to go for calorically less dense foods. So, and I haven't gotten the term right, but for sake of convenience, I call them volume foods. Now, why do I do that? Comparison, 300 grams of chocolate, 300, this is Sparta. <laughs> 300 grams of chocolate is 1,500 calories, maybe even 1,600. Something like that. Like these giant Milka bars we have in the Netherlands. And if you don't have them, it sucks to be you. Fifteen to 1,600 calories. 500 grams of broccoli, last time I checked, was about, what was that? Let me check real quick because I want to be sure. Where is that damn thing? There it is. Uh... Um, I guess I want to be right on this. Uh, food, yes. Broccoli. Brock. Yeah, 500 grams, or at least around 500 grams, is 175 calories. Now, you can either eat 300 grams of chocolate for 1,600 calories, or you can eat 500 grams of broccoli and get only 175 calories. If you have a daily caloric need of 2,500, there's 2,370, uh, so 20, 2,325 left. After finishing 500 grams of broccoli, you think you're satiated or not? I think you're a bit gassy too, but I'll leave that. I'll leave that in the open. <coughs> so that's what I tell my clients to look out for. Look for foods that are heavy in weight, but low in calories, mostly vegetables. Most vegetables are that. They're like very dense when it comes to weight in portions and things like that, but they're low in calories. Same with uh, non-fatty meats, things like that. They're high in portion, low in calories. That way you can get, get satiated, but you can also get your calories in. 
Um, what else do I tell them? Because that's where you kind of get to the guidelines. Now, what if, and I had this, I had a client who wanted to gain weight. Well, that's when you do it the other way around. That's when you go for high calories, but low weight. So less dense, less dense. That's the one. High density foods, low density foods. So less dense foods. But a good way to do that is high fat foods, like whole milk, whole cottage cheese, whole quark, fatty meats, things like that. Because not only are they satiating, they're huge in portion. Or at least they're, yes, they are huge in portion, but not that huge as you would need to eat if you would eat low fat. If you eat high fat, you can get in a tremendous amount of calories for a, uh, with less density than the other way around. So instead of writing everything to the timing itself down for a, for a client, instead of doing that, I'd rather inform them about better choices of food. Of course, lay down the sweets, lay down the, uh, the 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 empty calories, things like that. But what do you do then? How do you create a manageable food schedule, diet schedule? Well, get your protein right, get your overall calories right. After that, it really is a bit of personal preference and medical history. Like I said, if you're allergic to something, don't eat it. It's like, oh, but this guru told me. Seriously, what? Don't. Don't. Why would you? Well, because the Twitter guru with 10,000 followers told me that... <sighs> no. Ah, the guys are showing up. Sloth! Jiko's here. All the T-Rexes. God damn it. <laughs> Megatron's here. Swerve is here. Good to see you guys. Happy to see you. By the way, since you're here, smash that like button. It helps the algorithm. Makes me look good. Almonds always kick my ass. They are so tasty, but seriously dense. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But be smart about that. Like... If you can eat almonds like you can drink water, then maybe almonds are the best choice because you go over your caloric goal for the day. Your, yeah, caloric goal for the day. Goal for the day. So that's what you need to look out for. That's why I always go for these highly dense foods where it's like they're satiating and the portions are huge. Eggs are a good example as well. Like one egg is only like 80 calories or something like that. Like this is from the top of my head, mind you. And yes, that is with the yolk. That is with the yolk. Great source of vitamins, things like that. What I wanted to get back to. Why do I advise my clients who want to lose weight? Don't do that, internet. Why do I advise my clients who want to lose weight to put their activity level one step lower? First of all, people tend to overestimate their level of activity. They do. They really do. It's like, oh, but I go to the gym five times a week. Yeah, but what else do you do? Well, I sit on my ass and I work real hard. Okay, sure. So if I'd let them do it, they go for, oh, I'm very active. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're you're so active. But there's another thing. It will calculate most probably a, a lower amount of calories you need to take in, which is good, which is what you want. Also, it gives you space to maneuver, which is what I always like to do. I like space to, I do this with training schedules as well. I always aim a little bit lower for the intensity, 
Why is that? Because it gives you room to grow. Because that's what we want. If you go balls to the wall right away, you'll tire yourself out. And in the long run, you're going to go want to quit. You hit a plateau, things like that. So always aim a little bit lower. The same with losing weight, things like that. Let's say I tell my clients to like put the activity level where you think is appropriate. Nine times out of 10, they're overestimating their own activity level. And the first week, they're going to gain weight, which is already very demotivating to them. So I tell them, one activity level lower than you think what it is. Then I don't tell them to weigh in daily. Why not? And I've said this before, John Watts, get your bingo card out. Daily fluctuation of weight can be demotivating, can be disparaging, can give you a false sense of progress or regression. I tell them do it weekly, but not only weigh in weekly, take a photograph every week of yourself and see, visually see if you're changing. Now, let's say you lose weight too fast. Okay, good. We're going to bump those calories up by 50 calories a day. Why only 50? Again, room to maneuver. If you're still going too fast a week after that, 50 up again. Because I don't want you over expand that step so that you're going to gain weight again. Do it slowly, but do it surely. My name is not Shirley. <laughs> um, where was I? Yes. And let's say you're still gaining. We can take 50 off and we'll go from there. So that's why I don't do diet uh, plans or whatever. I do diet information because what's the best diet? The one that you can follow. But a lot of people need to learn what they're actually consuming. And that's kind of the problem where a lot of this lies. Because I can tell you, well, you know what? Eat your crackers and your tuna can fish and blah, blah, blah. No, not going to help. I would rather you feel secure about the choices you make in the grocery store that you actually like consuming them and not um, looking that you're, what's the word? That you're not nervous about going on a diet but just some slight altercations that you've been doing wrong that will make you gain, so that will get you where you want to be. Because a lot of people, they're like, I'm going on a diet. Two weeks, lost the weight, back. Right back at their old habits. So I'd rather teach you the habits and the changes you can make so you can move on. Because a lot of people, when they realize, and I forgot about this, by the way, what they're taking in, they have a more conscious awareness of what they're consuming. Another thing I tell my clients, or I ask them, what do you consume when it comes to liquids? And that's where I, that's where it comes from. Coffee with cream and sugar. Um, those, those carton orange juices, um, fruit mixes, what else? Uh, sodas. I tell them coffee, drink it black. And if that's too strong for you, do tea, but don't do coffee with milk and sugar. Why not? Because those are fluid calories and fluid calories are silent gainers. You're going to gain a lot without even noticing it when drinking liquid calories. That's one of those low-density foods. Yes, it is. Because the portion isn't very high, but it's very calorically dense. Same as those fruit juices. Look at the packaging of that shit. 100% fruit. And then you look at the packaging, and it's like all these added sugars, and it's like, whoa. I didn't know God had a factory. No. Let's, be, let's make a union. But uh, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. 
Uh, John, what's the protein shake? I'm not even sure about. I'll get to that in a moment. With the sodas, just, and oh, I am going to get grief for this one. Go for diet sodas. Go for the light variant of Coke or Pepsi. Pepsi Max, I believe that is. Because they have zero, zero calories. <gasps> But they have all these added flavor molecules. Hush. I have actually done some research on that. That was one of the cases we had back then. And it turned out that when you drink, what was it? Six liters for six months of Diet Coke, the chances of getting cancer increases by 1%. Six liters per day for six months. It's like, what? Who in the world does that? So that's how these headlines get you. That's how the headlines get you. Plus, they, didn't, they did not take into consideration all the other life choices people made. Same thing with red meat. Red meat consumption causes cancer. It's like, yeah, but have you seen those articles? They don't take into consideration what was eaten with the meat. All the other life choices. You name it. So, plus, if I have a client who's like, man, I really like my, my, my sodas. I like my Pepsi. I like my Coke. I'm like, I'd advise you to go for water tea or coffee but if you really feel like a soda or one of those energy drink monster go for the zero calories one <gasps> jack why would you do that because they are human because they are human every human being has a vice every human being every now and then wants something they enjoy now i would rather have them take a zero calorie energy drink or a soda then bend over backwards and punish themselves for not getting anything and going for the calorically dense one anyway if they would have just gone for the light variant the zero calorie zero calorie variant there is no progress lost so that's why I say I would rather have you drink the light variants than the normal ones if you really want to. My comment section is open. Jiko, you are not wrong about that. I do like the uh, the white monster can. I do like that one. But the other one, like Golden Power and Red Bull. <laughs> I remember as a kid, I saw a Red Bull commercial, and we we lived near a gas station. I'm not, I'm not kidding. We had like a gas station like in our neighborhood, and uh, my mom needed to get something. And I saw a Red Bull can. It's like, oh, I saw that on a commercial. That gives you wings. It was pretty expensive, like three golden back then. We had the golden. And my mom was like, I'm not buying you that. And of course, me being a child. I did get it. Parenting. I had one sip and I was like, mom, this is disgusting. I don't want it. It's like, no. <laughs> My mom looked at me. She's like, oh, I knew this would happen. And she took a sip because she was like, ah, this shouldn't be too bad. She's like, ah. And she threw it out. She's like, that's the, that's the. <sighs> That's the worst three golden I ever spent. Oh yeah, protein shakes. What about supplements? My dear friends, you don't need you don't need protein shakes. You don't need supplements other than what your blood test tells you to supplement most of you guys can get your protein out of food be it meat 
which means beef, pork, fish or chicken, cottage cheese, eggs, normal cheese. What else is a good one? Uh, I already had fish, cheese I had, uh, things like that. Most of you don't need protein powder to get to your daily protein intake. But a lot of people see guys in the gym tanking down their protein shake because, well, you know, got to get my muscles going without even knowing why they do it. It's like, oh, but I see him do it, so I got to do it too. No, you don't. Save yourself the money. It's all marketing. Jesus Christ. Now, there is one guy who I know who's about 100 kilos. So, first of all, he can probably eat like, I am already at 3,000. So, he can probably eat like 4,000. Now, mind you, 4,000 calories is a shit ton of calories. Then, you might want to go for a shake because it's just so easily digestible. Like, you can just tank it and be done with it. But if you're not 25, 225, don't bother. Really, don't bother. Unless you dislike eating. Did I miss your dis uh, you discussing your favorite method of calorie calculation? Download my fitness pal. Download my fitness pal. Put your activity level and one lower than what you consider it to be. Go from there. Yes, you missed it. It wasn't the beginning. Which leads me to food timing. And that's actually the last point. And, and we've got some time after that. Does timing matter does timing matter not really like in the grand scheme of things if you're a recreational lifter not really you'll like working out in a fasted state like i do do it you like only eating one meal a day like i do do it you like to eat two hours before you go training do it you like eating after you just trained? Do it. You like intermittent fasting? Uh, eating window, feeding window of eight hours, 16 hours of nothing? Do it. You like breakfast instead of dinner? Do it. It doesn't matter as much. It really doesn't matter. The argument could be, because what was it again? What was the research? It depended on your circadian rhythm, mostly. Like the time you go to sleep, the time you work out, the time you go to bed, things like that. So again, it's all on the individual. But at the end of the day, what really matters is that calories in versus calories out kind of thing. So... Timing is something which I assign to personal preference as well. Like, if you're not a top-level athlete and things like that, then don't bother with that so much. Now, what I was about to say about the 4,000 calories. Let's say you're a competitive strongman. Let's say you're a competitive strongman. And you need to eat. Nine to 10,000 calories a day. I'm not going to tell you that OMAD is the best diet out there. No. OMAD is for skinny motherfuckers like I am who can eat 3,000 calories in one sitting. One meal a day is not for big, very big motherfuckers. Like Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, Hafter Bjornsson, Serviscus, Big Z. Where's that Serviscus? <sighs> Keep confusing them. 
There's this huge Russian as well. Jesus Christ. He used to be uh, a Navy SEAL in Russia. It's like, holy shit. What was the other guy's name? You have Robert Oberst, and there's this other guy who trains with Juji. But you can't do one meal a day when your daily caloric intake is so high. <laughs> Bullrush for the $5.56 super cap. Thank you very much. I looked in the mirror and my circadian rhythm said I'm a piece of shit. I'm sorry I told you that, Bullrush. I don't think you're a piece of shit. I really don't think you are. But that's when <clears throat> preference comes into it as well. And what is convenient? What is convenient? Now, a lot of people use eating as a social thing. I will be very honest. If any of you have the nerve to talk to me while I'm eating, you're going to get a fork thrown to your head. I had girlfriends who I told, like quite literally, just to shut up when I was eating. Because I'm eating. It's like... Like, you, you, you're sitting there. You're enjoying the food. And it's like, oh, did you know how my day was? It's like... Like, what do you say? I'm eager. Oh, why do you eat with your mouth? Why do you talk with your mouth full? Because you're talking to me when I'm eating, woman. It's like, shut up. <laughs> and of course, the first time you do that, she looks at you like, and then later on, oh, wait, you're eating. Like, goddamn right I am. After that, I will be open to conversation. After that, we can converse. We can socialize, but not <laughs> when I'm eating. Damn it. There is, do I still, can you see that? Where is it? Somewhere here. Where is it on this finger? Oh, really? Did it disappear? Where is it? Where is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Can you see it? Come on. Ah, you can't see it. So years ago, the former bass player of my band, he knew how much I hated sharing food. I just absolutely hate it. It's, it's not necessarily the sharing I hate, but more the... the more, it's more the... You, there is a period of ordering food and getting your food. And there's even time in between that. And then like the people you're you're with, they don't order anything. Not while you are ordering and not while you are waiting for your order. And then you get your order and all of a sudden they're like, can I have a bit? Fuck you. Go to hell. And then they're like, oh, why are you, you're so rude. No, you're an idiot. You had 10 minutes to order your own damn food, to notice the urge of food in your body. Yet you decided against that. You decided to ignore your bodily urge to consume. And now you want to get from my plate. Fuck off. Now my bass player knew this. The thing was, he did order something. But just for his own shits and giggles, he stole, what was it? Like a, a potato chip, it was, I believe, from my plate. And I knew what he was doing. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I was just a bit pissed off, but I tried to do the same, and he stuck out his knife. And my finger just went right under that knife. Just threw it. And ever since then, I have this small little scar on my finger of that knife. <laughs> oh, we laughed so hard about that. <laughs> it's just amazing. No, but I have been yelled at, man. It was so stupid. It was stupid. It's like, really? I had a friend once. 
I was like, I'm ordering food. Do you want any? Do you want? I'm buying. Do you want any? No. No, I don't. I just ate. Fairy. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. So I get my food, which was, as we like to call it, a capsule, which is dinner kebab, french fries, a whole bucket of cheese, and some salad if you want to. But I'm not a rabbit. I start eating. I had just put in my first bite. And he goes, Hey, you mind if I get a piece of that? I'm like, Mother fucking dipshit. So I tell him, I asked you three times if you wanted some, get fucked. He's like, You don't have to be childish about it. I'm like, Mother dipshit. But that's what pisses me off about it. It's like, you had the time. You had the... You were cap your capability. You had the capability of doing it. Yet you refused. It's like, what more do you want me to do? It's like that meme, that guy on the bicycle. <laughs> the angry truth. Kind of. Kind of. What are you guys talking about in the chat? Oh, yeah. Judd Grover, of course. Just got here. I like cottage cheese. What are your thoughts on peanut butter? I mean, if with, with things like that, I kind of go with if it fits your macros. Why not? I would be a bit artistic about it. Like, do it on the scale. Oh, wait. Like, if you want to do portions for peanut butter... Put your peanut butter on the scale, put it to zero, and then it shows you how much you take out. Then you get minus 15, minus 15 grams. And that way you can calculate in your app how much calories you have of peanut butter. I have nothing against peanut butter. You have these all organic peanut butters, which are a bit more oily. My protein has those. I had that peanut butter and it is amazing. It is the best. But of course, people wanted to share that. Or no, people wanted me to share that. Where it's like, oh, yeah, share with us. Yeah, like I said, all natural ones. Jack gives us the finger. Jack's split personality is finally coming out. Do I have a split personality? Sloth, what are you talking about? Oh, I wanted to address this one. Being on the heavier end, but working on it and improving. You are, by the way, Governor Megatron. You are improving. I have to do something like egg whites to get an extra 100 or so grams of protein. And my fitness pal has been a huge help with my macros. Yes. See that? That is a guy who's improving. Because he is in my monthly consultation group. And we have a couple of very switched on guys in there who are going after it. I'm proud of that. I am. So, anything else? Because I kind of... Wow, 40 minutes. I said everything I want, and it finally took me longer than 10 minutes. How about that, y'all? That deserves an applause. Oh, I got... um, I got a new book yesterday. I got two, by the way. I'll show you. <laughs> No. I got Dataclism. This one. So stupid, by the way. I liked the other cover of Dataclism, but it was 10 euros more. I'm like, it's the same. It's the, it has the same theory in it. I'm not going to pay 10 euros more for the damn cover. And this one. Everybody lies. This one was recommended to me... Um, by a reviewer who did data clips. I can't remember who, but the stupid thing was like the paperback version. The paperback version is like one euro more expensive than the hardcover. I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Fuck you. I'm a cheap ass. 
I had oh, I had sour patch kids burrito and a monster for breakfast this morning. Yeah, but Bo Rush, you're a big boy. You're a big boy. That's uh can't can't lie about that. How the fact that we all not get wrenches because Suleiman, my chat is very spurg free. Bull Rush was one of the oldest, most well, reliable, I guess. He kind of got a wrench because he has a sense for spurgs kind of thing. Like Bull Rush, he, he gets them. He, he sniffs them out kind of thing. That's why Bull Rush has a wrench. Same for Marty. Even though, but Marty kind of knows Spurgs because he is a Spurg kind of thing. Plus, my chat is members only. Um, him. <laughs> and I am very thankful that my chat is members only because that way I don't have Spurgs in here. At least not a high level of Spurgs, which I'm very happy about. Um, that's kind of it. That's all I got to say today. Yeah, that's it. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. links. Truth the mug to tell your friends. Rob gave us all wrenches. Yeah, I saw that man. That whole chat is blue, but all of you are green, Suleiman. All of you are green. You have these gr green, cool little badges. Don't worry, mods. The only thing mods can do is like ban idiots. Doesn't have more added value to it. Let's see. Um, Truth the mug is in there. Get on the email list for the exercise performance course. Chuck Grover gets it. The truth is out there. Um, audiobooks. I really recommend. <laughs> I want to ban both. You can't ban other uh, mods. I tried that before. <laughs> oh, nice Governor Megatron. That would be amazing. High functioning artist, as Ryan calls them. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, in all honesty, next Thursday, I will be in do I will be doing a show again on some red pill theory, which I have not done in a while. But I do want to do it because I found an old married red pill post about it, which will be rule one. We're going to talk about rule one, not rule zero. No, we're going to talk about rule one. But um, I have seen a couple of things on Twitter where the sexual marketplace is being talked about in the abstract. Ladies and gentlemen, the sexual marketplace is situational. And I've said that before. It is situational. Situational. When I walk into a Dungeons and Dragons meeting, I will be in the top 20% by default. Let's be honest here. Um, if you are going to play Instagram game, it's going to be a little bit harder to be in the top 20%. I found out my YouTube channel is in the top 20% of all YouTube channels. Where my hoes at? Where they at? Well, I'm a top 20%er. Anybody? <laughs> but a lot of people focus so much on the Pareto principle. It's like the 80-20 rule and we're lost. Oh. It is 80-20 in the situation where you find yourself in. It is situational. So I really recommend you get either oh, go to blacklabellogic.com That's where you can get the uh, paperback versions. If you want the audiobook versions, follow that link. That explains it perfectly. The sexual marketplace is your chess club. The sexual marketplace 
is your social circle. The sexual marketplace is your dance club, uh, dancing class. The sexual marketplace is your work. Whether you like it or not, work is a sexual marketplace as well. Your college is a sexual marketplace. Yes, Tinder and all that have globalized it or have like, um, quote unquote, changed the game. But that's Tinder. You have Tinder, you have the real world, and you have all what comes with that. There is no general, well, they're kind of, yes. Yes, there is a general 80-20 rule, but that 80-20 rule will be divided over all sorts of divisions. We're not talking in the abstract here. <laughs> when hoes. Yeah, I wanted to make that meme, by the way, of that chimpanzee on the couch. Like, when you find out you're a top 20%er in your D&D &D club, when hoes. <laughs> because at a certain point, it just becomes so so easy to mock people where it's like by god man you somebody read a statistic but did not understand it they're taking it not seriously your gym is a sexual marketplace just saying you work as a sexual marketplace do tread carefully especially if you're a boss oh, absolutely um, I will leave it at that. Actually, that is kind of what I wanted to plug. Uh, any other things are in the chat in the description below. Please leave subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below what your thoughts were of this show. I will see you again on Thursday, my dear friends. And that's it. Top scenes.